Welcome to episode 45 of Rebirth Revolution. My name is Melissa Olson. I watched an episode of American Masters the other day on PBS. It was entitled Unladylike 2020. They were exploring the lives of women a hundred years ago and telling the stories of the brave women who battled for equality and justice. Good stuff. In this show, they said that back then, some warned that if women participated in education, all of their energy would be sucked out of their reproductive systems, which would eventually result in the United States being rendered infertile. That's some pretty strong stuff. Pick up a book, become infertile. It's laughable now but it made complete sense to some at the time. It was a genuine fear for them. I promise you, some of what you think now will be seen as equally preposterous a hundred years from now. As it always has been, it always will be. We in this school are all works in progress. The collective culture has always been and always will be a work in progress. We do not fully understand any part of the world that we inhabit. It is beyond our current capacity for understanding. This should do two things for us. It should keep us humble, and it should keep us in a space where we continue to question and examine all of our thoughts and the systems we create from those thoughts. Every single system is a reflection of every thought that put it in place, along with every thought that kept it operating exactly as it does. We should remain humble because we are tiny specks in this great big world, and we struggle daily to conceive of its complexity. We have great difficulty zooming out and understanding how everything is interconnected, and it is all interconnected. We should question and re-examine constantly because anything that made perfect sense a decade or more ago probably no longer takes into account the consequences of our previous choices. Every challenge we face, be it climate change, systemic racism, inequality gaps, or global pandemics, is the outcome of our prior thoughts, outcomes that we could not or would not have predicted at the time we thought them. We are masters at making a move in one segment of our lives that we do not realize will shift everything in the other segments of our lives. We are much more drawn to easy, quick fixes. But that is not where we find ourselves right now. We find ourselves with our better thinking, our better historical evidence, looking at complex systems we have built that must now be dismantled and reconstructed if they are to work for our betterment and the survival of our species. That sounds dire, and indeed it is, but it is not a task that is beyond the grasp of many who are here on the planet right now who know what needs to be done. This circles back to the concept of humility, because sometimes we look at challenges and throw our hands up in defeat because we, as individuals, don't know enough to know what the solution is. We need to use our humility to be comfortable that there are others who do have answers and we need to let them do their thing. But there's been a massive pushback. At the time when we need our experts the most, we are also seeing an uprising of anti-intellectualism and a perverse need to undermine those who have spent their lives 
immersed in any area of study. And at the same time, the experts are being rejected. The most ridiculous of conspiracy theories are taking root. They are so ridiculous that I won't even repeat them here. They don't deserve acknowledgement. The conspiracy theories have one thing in common. They do not need a fully functioning mind to be absorbed or processed. Any dummy can quickly repeat them without running them through a filter of logic or credibility. The information that the experts offer is often deep and nuanced, and it stretches your current level of understanding. That can make you uncomfortable. It's a much more comfortable feeling when you can convince yourself that you know what's up, but it is rarely, or at least not fully, true. And the act of convincing yourself that you have something figured out often blocks any further growth in that arena. We are here to learn and grow. Our minds are powerful and designed to take in new information all the time. Only we have the power to block the process. So many of our struggles are rooted in wanting to cling to a piece of information and then act on that information until the end of time. We see it with COVID-19. We are still very much in the dark about this particular virus. The scattershot path it takes when decimating a human body makes it hard to pin down. There doesn't seem to be a system of the body that it does not have the ability to affect. The different manners in which it can be transmitted and received are not yet fully understood. This is a medical head scratcher for the ages. The only cure that we can reasonably rule out is denial. It doesn't respond to denial. Denial doesn't make it budge no matter how much anger and indignation you tack on. It's all so very human to deny challenges. We all do it to a lesser degree every day. We all have those issues in everyday life that we know we need to do something about, but we just lack the motivation or fortitude to do what we know needs to be done. So here we are with the big challenges that face us. Remember, we came here for this. Many people ask themselves and the world at large, why am I here? What is the purpose of my life? This is the purpose of your life. You are here to make the choices that will move you and this whole planet forward. You are here to keep the story going and to do it in a way that is ethical and fair and loving. This is the power you possess, and this is the critical mission you chose before coming to this school. We have talked about our spiritual goal being the ability to feel nothing but love and compassion for ourselves and others. And along the circuitous route we take to get there, we are faced with millions of choices of choosing light over darkness. We are at that crossroads right now. To choose darkness is to actively deny our challenges through petulance and ignorance, like being unwilling to wear a mask to slow the spread of the virus. We choose darkness when instead of tackling the issues with our best thinking and our best efforts, we deny them by grasping to idiotic conspiracy theories that squander everyone's energy and focus. We choose darkness when we gaslight marginalized people by denying the events perpetrated on them that made and kept them marginalized. We choose darkness 
when we go back to the well again and again for the ideas of the very people whose ideas have created this mess. We choose darkness when we fail to deal with what we came here for. None of our challenges can be solved with denial. To choose light is to bring our highest levels of integrity and awareness, along with our humility, to a place where we can hear from those with the best ideas. We need to be open to great ideas from every possible source. We choose light when we act in ways that demonstrate that the safety and well-being of everyone is as important as our own well-being. We choose light when we become brutally honest about every thought and related action that happened in the past that is part and parcel of why we are here now. We choose light when we step up and do our part And for the parts we're not capable of doing, we step aside and let those with the best ideas do what they came here to do. If you can't help us, at least don't hurt us. Do not be afraid. You don't have to have it all figured out at this moment. You will be presented with a series of challenges, a series of choices of light over darkness. Use your highest ideals to make each choice. The choice you make begins the path forward and will lead to the next choice. Not every choice will work out as you had hoped, but that's to be expected. When something doesn't work out, don't spend time blaming or shaming. Just figure out the next right move. We always knew It came down to our choices. We knew that the system is designed with free will and that your choices are the way you move up and down the levels of your spiritual awareness. If there are no challenges, there are no ways to learn and grow. If there is no darkness, there is no choice to be made. The system is not broken. It is working exactly as planned. The system is designed for the full expression of your soul. The system is fully supporting your growth. Put your best foot in front of the other and you are part of the rebirth. Thanks for listening to Rebirth Revolution. I appreciate your involvement. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Email rebirthrev at gmail.com or leave a comment on rebirthrevolution.com. You might want to follow us on social media as well. Until next week, continue to watch the raw footage of the protests. Plot out what you can do to help. Work in regular breaks from the action and wear your mask. Remember, you are loved exactly as much as every other person on the planet, not one ounce more or one ounce less. Stay open and humble and safe. 